This is not 10 on 10 episode 4. This is just me stuck alone in an apartment in London. There's lockdown outside so I can't shoot a gig. But you know, sometimes when you're stuck alone you have questions. You do realize that being afraid of you is not the same thing as supporting you, right? That dominance and governments are not the same thing. And don't pretend like you don't know that we're afraid of you. There are literally hostages who have Stockholm Syndrome, who have the same expression as our actors do when they take selfies with leaders from your government. Just, help <laughs> me. Your biggest achievement is that you made it basically impossible for us to argue with you. And you confuse that with us agreeing with you. And it's not the same thing. It's impossible to argue with you, but it's also impossible to argue with a pencil. Don't believe me? Hey, pencil. Hey, pencil. Why didn't you give us an account for the money that was... What? Fuck off. Okay, pencil. The only difference between you and this pencil is I get to dictate when I use this pencil to write my history. To the Congress party, when are you going to realize that it's basically over, man? I'm sorry, just accept it. It's over. You're like dinosaurs who are stuck in Arctic icebergs. You're beautifully preserved but technically dead. It's over. When are you going to start? When are you going to stop trying to shove your prodigal son down my throat? You're always combining him with Saputi. Would you like him with this? Maybe you'd like him with some of that. You're not going to sneak him onto my plate. He's a 50-year-old man, not a basil leaf. Alright? Go away. If for nothing else, just to mess with the other guys. Can you imagine? just the people in the BJP alone in parliament screaming at each other because they miss you. Mandir banega! Maine bola banega! Maine zor se bola banega! They would go literally insane. And honestly, why? Why do you even want to come back? Huh? Look at Bill Gates. He retired with grace and you have made way more money than that guy. You, they, they, forget Apple, you are literally the most profitable company in the world. That's what you should do, just get Chinese people to make you phones. And by the way, if you're looking for Chinese people, you can now find them within our territory. The young politicians, you know who you are. The ones who say party line stuff in public and then try to be progressive in private. You know, you're cool on Twitter and then you say hateful shit in speeches. You know that we can see you, right? We see you switch around and run around between the party and who you really want to be. Coco is still one of our national sports. We recognize the pattern. Jesus Christ, there are protoplasms stuck in bowls of jelly who have stronger spines than you guys. The only difference between you and a protoplasm is a protoplasm actually knows how to commit to a nucleus. Is that a science joke? You're fucking right it is. Why don't you Google it once you are done boycotting Google? You're like this guy who's playing musical chairs at a party without a party or music or chairs. And then you have the gall to call us anti-national. Bitch, we own the national. You're just renting it. Those chairs belong to me. It's my house. I invited you. The Aam Aadmi Party. Here's a question for you. Hey, where are you guys? You still a, a thing? Still going on? Because you kind of went from being like, alright, we're going to listen to everyone and fix everything to just being like, we're going to listen to that one guy and fix that one thing. You're like Osho without all the sex or the fun or Osho. I'm not saying that you're a cult, but you listen to one guy and wear matching hats. So you figure that shit out. And finally to us, the voters who vote for this shit, you do know that our conscience only wakes up when our economics are impacted, right? Like would we be having these conversations about vaccines or about human rights if the GDP was up by 14%, the Indian middle and upper class? Tomorrow, if you told us that there was a private vaccine that was available that we could buy at a high cost, but the vaccine was manufactured using the tears of babies, literally punching them and getting the tears of human babies, it would sell out in five seconds and we would still complain about the GST on the sale. Hey, while we're talking about antiquated morality, let's talk about news channels. Let's begin with everybody's favorite, The Republic. Hey man, you know we're not watching you for news, right? You do know that, right? We're watching Republic for the same reason we watch Big Boss. The only difference between you and Big Boss in the people in Big Boss are already locked up and you soon will be. Can't we just rename your channel? Just be honest about it. Huh? Give it a name like, hey, Man Ki Baat. Just call your channel Man Ki Baat because let's be honest, you're not really doing the news, are you? You're a DJ, that's what you are. You're loud and your basic job is to get people to jump up and down on the dance floor. What is the dance floor? It's just where facts and real information used to be. You get people to trample on that shit, but you haven't really made anything that people want to listen to. 
It's not like your original Republic TV. The only thing you've effectively created is a crowd. Now NDTV, when are you going to realize that you don't have the moral high ground? You're not better than anybody else. The people on your panels are so excited by the sound of their own voice. It's like watching people pleasure themselves to their own words. The only people who watch your panels are the people on those panels. Can you please just give us the news in a way that people understand? Just once, I'd like to see Pranoy Roy come on NDTV and be like, Good evening, I'm Pranoy Roy. This evening's news, gaan lag gai. Puri tarah gaan lag gai. Thank you so much. Here's Fatima with the sports. Z News. Can you just stick to serials? I'm just gonna... Like, if you are using the same background music for like the financial budget or breaking news as you are for that moment where Kum Kum dropped the methi into Kautalya's thali, just like... You're not a news channel. You're just what happens when a graphic designer and a sound designer do MDMA in an office cubicle at 3 a.m. India Today. Who are you? Literally, what do you represent apart from successful advertising revenue? Your channel flip-flops more than the chappals we throw at politicians' faces. Maybe that's why we call you India Today. Because you don't know who you're going to be tomorrow. You're not establishment, you're not anti-establishment. All you are is intermittent ads for Amity Professional University. To younger people, I love that you're getting involved. Can you please also read up a little bit? No generation is equipped to deal with more information than you guys. So it sucks to see you at a protest. Just to be like, yeah, man, we are here to protest. The, the CAB, BCC, PTSD, AF. Read some shit, would you? Everybody in the nation is terrified of you. Politicians are terrified because you can see through them. News channels are terrified because you don't watch them. Intellectuals are terrified because you know more shit than them. Do you think Rajdeep Sardesai knows what bahut hard means? You think our finance minister has ever seen an eggplant emoji? To intellectuals, opinion makers, people with Twitter followings, writers, mouthpieces, the lecture circuits. I realize that what you are saying is so important, but do you have to be so fucking dislikable? Oh my God, you know no one likes you, right? Like reading your opinion or listening to your opinion is like eating broccoli dipped in kale sauce. I know it's good for me, but it just leaves such a rotten taste. And you've got this notion that because of your achievements, people should respect you. Let me break it down for you. In today's India, nobody respects you. Forget respect you. Nobody likes you. I don't like you and I'm one of you. That's right, I'll call myself out right now. I am one of you. I am a privileged left-wing grammatical masturbation, excited with his own opinion, liberal, smug, full of shit. But at least I'm also a comedian who has the common decency to hate himself. To so India's biggest problem, uncles. You know you're still an uncle, right? Like, no matter what happens, you are an uncle. I mean, the leader you love may be running India, you are still Suresh uncle. He could have won 45 elections. You still have air that comes out of your ears and flutters in the wind like a dream catcher that catches dreams and then kills them to death. You know that, right? Like the bill that you love could have been passed, but you still can't see your toes, man. Let's be honest, uncle. You are masturbating and putting on socks through intuition purely. And you do know that one day your daughter is going to date a boy from exactly that religion that you despise. And when you try and stop her, you will truly discover what a protest is, uncle. To celebrities, famous people, I would tell you to grow some balls, but you've all been so scared by the Me Too movement, you live your life in fear of women, so grow some fucking ovaries, would you? And you do know that your fan base is going to hold you accountable for more than just your work in movies, right? You do know that your movies are also being watched by like students, farmers and minorities. And then my favorite people on the internet, the not all people, you know these guys, not all men, not all you do know that every post is not about you, right? Not all men are rapists. Not all white people are racist. Not all squirrels are Nazis. Yeah, we know. It's pretty obvious. Not all coffee cups are murder weapons. Maybe I'm just talking about the one cup that I will use later on to kill that social justice warrior in his office late at night. Here's a hint, all right, Einstein. If you see a post, or some content and you don't see yourself in that post or content, much like all good things in the universe, the shit is not about you. And also, by the way, if you have to scream so loudly that you didn't do something, I think you did something.
To Muslims, when are you going to learn to take a goddamn joke? To Hindus, when are you going to learn to take a goddamn joke? To Christians, when are you going to stop pretending like Muslims and the Hindus are the ones who have the murder problem? Yo, you wrote the original, we're just remixing this behavior. You can't be holier than thou, you are the OG thou. And look, I don't know what this video is, I'm stuck in an apartment in London, so I might as well apologize to everyone here, because why the fuck shouldn't I? Let's just apologize in advance for all comedy. It's very clear that you watch this so that you could have a laugh and you are not laughing. In fact, the only people who are laughing don't watch comedy. Look at this room. The last time a room was this silent, MJ Akbar lost a court case in it, all right? So forgive me, I just had some questions. So yeah, what I did here on this video is like unappropriate and uncalled for and impolite and not respectful. But hey, at least it was democratic. At least we asked a question of everybody, right? Like I had to be conscious about that. Like I have to be fair. I have to ask all these questions to all parties. Like I am important. Like my opinion matters. Like this video is going to change anything but my own algorithms. I'm a moron. I'm barely educated. I'm not even remotely qualified. And yet I have to shoot for a fairness in my comedy that we can't even manage with our own judiciary. <sighs> so if me meandering through this river of doubt that is firmly flanked by two unerodable riverbeds of bullshit means that we arrive at a delta that has a better like water body metaphors and two a singular question which is who the fuck do I think I am then let's swim in that ocean and sink to the bottom and dive into a question for you which is just how bad have things really gotten if you're watching this